the AR-15 M16 bolt carrier groups. We're going to take a look at some of the different aspects, some of the different features, how to identify your M16 or your AR-15 bolt carrier, and also we're going to look at what makes it mil-spec and break it down and just talk about some of the finer points of these bolt carrier groups. Okay, during the video you may hear me say just bolt instead of bolt carrier group. But if I'm holding the bolt carrier group, you know that I'm referring to the bolt carrier group and not just the bolt. Now, what is a mil-spec bolt carrier? And there are some criteria that the U.S. military uses to make sure that these are uniform with other bolt carriers and meet certain quality standards. And one of those is this needs to be Carpenter 158 steel, which is a super strong steel able to take a lot of pressure. This is your piston and it needs to ride smooth, it needs to function well. So this is a very important part of your rifle. Also, the interior of the bolt carrier needs to be chrome plated. And we're going to take a look at that in a minute when we disassemble the bolt. It also needs to have grade A fasteners, and the bolt needs to be shot pinged. And that's one of the things of using material to just bombard these pieces, and it actually hardens and strengthens the surface of the metal. And the exterior is parkerized. Okay, we have a number of different type bolt carrier groups laying here. And the first one I want to talk about is the M16 bolt carrier group. And the bolt carrier itself is where the difference is. If you'll notice, it's thick here and then it comes down where the hammer comes through and hits your firing pin. And then the back end of it is just a circular tube. And the cuts are about the same place. And they ride together. And this is your standard M16 bolt carrier here, compared to the AR-15 bolt carrier, which has deeper cuts. You can see here there's a lot less material on the end. So if you pull your bolt out, this is directly how you know if it's an AR-15 or the M16 bolt carrier. And this is one of the enhanced AR-15 bolt carrier cuts. The original AR-15 cut is a lot shorter. And so this gives you a little more mass, a little better consistency. And that's one of the things, if I had my choice between the two, just straight up, I would pick the M16 bolt carrier because it actually slows the rate of fire down just a touch and the weight difference is not that much and it makes it more consistent and more balanced. But I've been shooting AR-15 bolt carriers for a long time and they work just fine. But one of the reasons for this cut is it won't engage the auto sear on the M16. So with this cut, it doesn't enable the M16 to work. And this also won't work with lightning links because of the cut. Now this is the half circle bolt. And this is a Colt bolt. In fact, if you ever come across these, it is a Colt design. And you can see at the end, there is no bottom end to the shroud. So it's just freely open. And the reason why they made this cut is to eliminate any possibility of this being able to fire a select fire or an M16 rifle. And so they just went ahead, instead of going all the way to the end, they just cut it all off. The Colt is reminding us that we're subjects. Now, if you find one of these in your Colt rifle, and it's not in all Colt AR-15s, it's only in some. And, but if you find this and it matches the lower, it's because they had the auto sear block in the receiver. If you put one of the AR-15 bolt carrier groups or the M16, it will not work in a lower receiver with the auto sear block. And really, to be honest, these work just fine. If it's working in your rifle, then just leave it. But one of the things that I don't like about this bolt is that the firing pin is exposed. On a standard AR-15 or the M16, there is a protective shroud right here, and this is where the hammer rides against the bolt. So unfortunately, the hammer can hit the firing pin and ride it down before it hits the bolt carrier. And this does cause some wear, and I've even seen some pins to bend and break. And this is probably one of the reasons why I'm not all that big of a fan of the half-circle bolt carrier. Now my favorite in this group is this AB Arms boron-coated bolt carrier group. And this is really super slick, it's smooth, it's an M16, and it just really functions well. In fact, you can run these a lot drier than you can the parkerized or phosphate bolts that you typically see. Uh, but that's mainly because of the bolt itself. Really, the outside of this bolt carrier doesn't necessarily need it. In fact, AB Arms has switched to just going with a boron-coated bolt and the interior's coated. 
the outside has a phosphate on it and that saves you some money as well but these bolts are really sweet and to me worth the money in fact I have one of the new bolts coming and we'll be doing a review on that now there's some rumors going around that the M16 bolt carrier is illegal in an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle and that's just untrue uh, the ATF has spoken a number of times and the bolt carrier has no effect on a full auto ring or select fire of the rifle and so it is perfectly legal to use an M16 bolt carrier in your rifle. In fact, this one came directly out of a brand new from the factory uh, Wyndham Weaponry MPC carbine. And they use the M16 bolt carrier. Now, a very important element that I touched on on the previous video is about the gas key and how they're staked. And it's really important to have these well staked and locked into place. You can't take Loctite because there's so much extreme heat that comes through here and it'll degrade the Loctite. These have to be staked to remain into place and it needs to be a good stable system. Here I'm going to give you a poor example of not only the staking, which you'll see here, this is an old Bushmaster bolt, and if you'll look, it's loose. And when I notice that, I need to get this staked, which I'm going to do, but I wanted to show this for the example that this is what can happen if your gas key is not properly staked and you can imagine with the pressures and with your gas tube feeding to this this is going to cause a problem okay we're going to disassemble the bolt carrier and let you look at all the different parts and how it comes apart separating the bolt and some of the other firing pin and some of the pieces just to give you a better idea of how these function the first thing you do is take out this little cotter pin that holds your firing pin into place then just take your bolt and wrap it and it'll drop the firing pin out of the bolt carrier group. Now one part immediately that I would recommend you keep some spares of are some firing pins because these can break and you can have some issues. Once the firing pin's removed and only after the firing pin's removed because it locks into this cam pin. You turn the cam pin and then you can just pull it straight out. This is where the firing pin rides through the cam pin. And this holds your bolt into place. Then we just pull our bolt loose. And here we have the bolt. This is your extractor, your ejector. You have your gas rings right here. And if they are not into place, this doesn't allow for the pressure to build up to, to allow separation between the bolt face and the chamber. So if you're starting to have ejection issues, this is one place to check to make sure that your gas rings are still good. Now one way to check your gas rings is to place your bolt with it in the extended position on a flat surface and just see if it stays into place like this and if it begins to sink that means it's about time to change your gas rings. One place to notice too for a lot of carbon buildup is right around this area. And that's one of the things I love about the Leatherman Mutt it is an AR-15 M16 specific tool. Now, this carbon bronze scraper is great for being able to get the carbon off of your bolt in hard to get places and it doesn't scratch up the surface. In fact, this one is in need of some cleaning. Here you can see the hard chrome plating on the inside of your bolt carrier. And that extends out into this area as well. Now we're not gonna break the bolt totally down, but here is your extractor and you push your pin through and then of course your ejector right here and here's the disassembly pin right here. Now to reassemble just go ahead and place your bolt back into the carrier and you want to make sure that your ejector and your extractor are lined up correctly. Extractor right here at the 10 o'clock position the ejector down here at about the 4 to 5 o'clock position and you're going to know that because you're going to line up your hole for your cam pin. And take your cam pin, slide it into place horizontally, and then go ahead and turn it into the vertical position. That locks in your bolt. Place your firing pin back into the carrier, and then just replace the pin. You want to make sure that the firing pin is in the fully recessed area, and the bolt carrier is assembled. Now, one thing that ensures a lot of quality of your bolt carrier group is, is it HPT and MPI tested and the HPT stands for high pressure tested the MPI stands for magnetic particle inspection they put these under a tremendous amount of pressure 
It's way beyond what you're going to have in the field as far as a cartridge, the pressure that the cartridge and the gases put on the bolt. Then they go through and do a magnetic particle inspection, and this reveals any kind of cracks, stress fractures, anything that could happen. So really, it just kind of ensures that you have a good quality bolt. Most of your really good companies, it's Colt, Novesky, Daniel Defense, those guys do that to every bolt and barrel. But there are a lot of companies, mainly the lesser known, they do what they call batch testing. And they'll take a hundred bolt carriers or barrels and they'll pull one out of that lineup and do the testing. A lot of people think that it's overrated. And to be honest with you, I don't know if they've been HPT and MPI tested. But I know most of mine are from reputable uh, high quality AR-15 manufacturers, so I'm sure they are. That is just one of the things that if you really want to ensure a good quality bolt, that's one way to do it. So I hope this helps give you some information about your bolt. I know there's a lot of new guys out there, and knowing your weapon system, knowing how it functions, is the key to being able to repair, to replace parts, and to diagnose problems that you're having. And of course, leave any comments below if there's anything I've missed, because I am not the extreme expert on this, but I've been shooting AR-15s for about 20 years, and I'll tell you, I learn something new every day. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Place your firing pin back into the, place your firing pin back in. HTP and MPI testing is really important now. Now one thing that is important now, and HTP stands for high pressure tested, the MPI stands for magnetic, the MPI stands for magnetic, 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 is that like a Big Mac? <laughs>